aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about it, <laughs> about anything, about what, anything and everything. All right, so <clears throat> got this interesting article, which I haven't read yet. Um, what I like to do when I come across some of these articles is if I see something that's interesting, I'll make note of it, but I won't read it. So that way, when I'm going through it with you guys, you can see a uh, an honest reaction uh, in regards to what we're reading. It's not like I read it and then I'm just kind of like, well, guess what? Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> very few times will I do that, but it's I'll. It won't be uh, like in front of the computer where I read it. I'll I'll kind of talk about it after the effect and, and give you my uh, opinions. But anyway. Uh, self-made millionaire. This is the number one way to get rich. And most young people are not doing it. Well, let's see what they have to say. Um, driving for gig economies like DoorDash and Grubhub. That's the number one way to get rich. No. No. Why do so many of us have such poor attitudes towards money? Because it sucks, that's why. There are few <laughs> There's bills and insurance and taxes and everything. It sucks. There are few convincing cases you can make. Not enough education. Too much information. <laughs> or maybe you had too much education and now you have bills galore. Uh, confusing messages from the media are simply a lack of interest. Whatever the reason, it's clear that young people aren't doing the single most effective thing that will make them rich. Investing in the stock market. As long as you do it right. Um, according to the recent Gallup poll, only 37% of young Americans ages 35 and under said they own stocks between 2017 and 2018. Compared to the 61% of people over the age of 35 did own stocks. Opening an investment account gives you access to the biggest money-making vehicle in the history of the world, and you don't have to be rich to do it. Many account providers will waive minimums, the amount required to open an account, if you set up an automatic monthly transfer. Well, <clears throat> let me tell you something, because uh, I do investing. Uh, who I got set up, I don't have to worry about monthly fees or anything like that uh, either. Um, and I don't have an automatic withdrawal going into them either. But I do believe that you need to make uh, at least some transactions of, of some sort uh, from, from time to time, which I do. <clears throat> That's true. You don't have to be rich to invest in the stock market. There are all kinds of different uh, stocks that you can buy. B basically, look for the stocks that interest you and start setting money aside you know buy a share buy two shares buy three shares uh i'll kind of i'll show you what it is that i have uh and well no they're not all making money but you know some are <clears throat> invest now you're not getting any younger yes i wish i had did that when i was young <laughs> What if you had started investing $10 per week five years ago? Assuming an average return of 8%, you'd have thousands of dollars today, all from investing a little more than $1 per day. Think about that. $10 a week. Where did it go anyway? If you're like most, you probably spent it on Uber rides and Frappuccinos. <laughs> Despite wild rides in the stock market, <laughs> is that a pun? Rides, Uber rides, I don't know. The best thing you can do is to think long-term and start investing early. 
If you invest $10 per week, after one year, you'll have $541. After five years, you'll have $3,000. After 10 years, you'll have $7,000. Okay. Um, this depends upon what you're investing in. Because if you're investing in a company that is not is not in an overall uptrend or they're really slow then I don't know if you're going to be making this so it all depends upon what you're investing in too and there are some companies that you can invest in and lose money uh, because they're on a downtrend so basically you know look for companies that interest you and look to see if they have an overall uptrend or not and then again you know, you're not going to be able to get, you know, something for, well, I mean, yeah, you can get something for $10, but basically what you would want to do is maybe set that $10, $30, $50, whatever, put it into your investment account, but you don't buy a share until you've got enough money to do so. So just by putting it in your investment account, you're not going to be making money on it. Um, well, it depends upon... Uh, the investment company that you go with because sometimes they will put that they'll move that money into uh not really a checking account but it allows you to make interest off of that money that you haven't invested yet it's not much um but there are some out there that do that uh stop making excuses although most people are limited by circumstances most will never get rich simply because they have poor money practices yeah i that i agree with if you're in tw if you're in your 20s or 30s there's still time to set aggressive investment goals the first step is to understand what your excuses or what i call invisible scripts really mean invisible script there are so many stocks out there so many ways to buy and sell stocks and so many people giving different advice it feels overwhelming what it means this is code for, I want to hide behind complexity. Any new topic is overwhelming. Diets without workout regimes or parenting. The answer isn't to avoid it. It's to pick a source of information and start learning. Number two, I don't want to be the person who buys into the market when it peaks. What it means, you already know you can't time the market, but you just don't understand it. You can make this problem disappear by automatically investing each month. Number three, I haven't invested in anything because there are so many different options to put my money in over the long term. Real estate, stocks, cryptocurrency, and commodities. I know I should invest, but stocks don't feel comfortable. What it means, the great irony is that you believe control will help your investment returns. In reality, you'd actually get better returns by doing less. The less control you have, the better. The average investor buys high, sells low, and trades frequently, which incurs taxes. All of this cuts your returns by huge amounts. It sounded like my dog was whining, but I think that's a bird. Yeah, I know, like a dog and a bird don't sound anything alike. Unless you heard my dog because of the way she whines. Invisible script, due to my lack of knowledge and experience, uh, this is number four. In the stock market, I don't wish to lose my hard-earned my uh, hard-earned money. What it means? Ironically, every day that you don't invest, you're actually losing money due to inflation. Huh, there's a thought. You'll never realize this until you're in your 70s, at which point it'll be too late. I'm getting there. i got about another 20 years to go. Invisible script. Fees are a big part of it. I only have a small amount to invest, so trading fees can make a big dent in my returns. What it means? It's totally mystifying how people think investing equals trading stocks. Oh wait, no it isn't. Every dumb commercial and app pushes this agenda. When you follow my advice, your fees can be really low. And number six. I ordered a small coffee instead of a large, so I'm actually saving X dollars a day. Am I adulting? <laughs> Is that a word? What it means? Not really. All right. I mean, maybe that was a joke. I don't know. So that's it. 
Uh, that is the number one way to get rich that most young people are not doing. I've actually, um, I've seen another article stating that the younger generation is, they're not, uh, investing in the stock market because they're afraid of it. They're not, they're not sure which way it's going to go, et cetera, et cetera. And I can't give you any actual uh, advice as far as where in the market you should be uh, investing. But I can say that if you don't do it, you're going to wish you did do it later on. I wish I did it long ago. Um, but just do it, just do it smartly. I mean, you know, don't take your whole check and throw it into the stock market. You know, don't do that. Just, you know, um, it's, it's investing. You think of it as an investment. So you buy a house, you're investing money into a house. Um, a car is not an investment because that always, uh, loses value. Um, you could say, I don't know uh school education that's an investment um so think of it like that you're 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 taking some money each week or each month however however it is that you want to do it and you're putting that into a company and that co and not only do you owe a part of that company but that company is going to make money for you uh, that's if you pick the right company that's on an upward trend so and i read this uh I, I read this somewhere else where it was talking about when you buy stock you're buying uh, a part of the company which there's that part but what i um what i what i had read which which makes a kind of an interesting thought is that you are now a partner with that business. So let's say John's Pizza Mart or something. So when you buy some shares, it's kind of like, okay, now you're going into business with this John's Pizza Mart. So when John's Pizza Mart starts making money, you're making money too. So that's a way to kind of kind of think about it. You're 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 becoming part of these companies. And you're letting those companies make money for you. As they make more and more money, so are you. And the more that you're invested in a company, the more money you're going to be coming back with. Um, one thing that I can suggest, though, is if you do invest your money, uh, invest it into companies that are going to give you good dividends. Because <clears throat> whether the market uh, goes up or goes down, you will still get money based on those dividends. So think of it like a bank account. And uh, those dividends every quarter, it's kind of like getting paid interest. So that's it. Uh, that's, that's all there is um, on this. What do you think about it? Do you invest? Um, let me know. Let me go ahead and show you what it is that I have. All right, so here is my portfolio right here. Uh, I've got 10 shares in AMC Theaters. Uh, I have 50 shares in Community Health Service. So I have, a, I have it invested in a, a wide variety of different types of things. And m many of these, the negative that it has is uh, it's figuring in the transaction fee that I did. So if I buy five shares, 10 shares, it's like, it's about, a, it's almost, it's like $4.99 for a transaction fee. So it automatically figures that in and say, oh, okay, you are negative $4.99 uh, and you have to, you know, get to this certain point before you start making a profit on it. Of course, I, that doesn't take into account that if you sell it, it's going to you know cost four ninety nine to sell it. But anyway, uh, this here is a option, a call option that I bought 
it was very cheap uh, when I bought, and you can see the price of some of these too. So like AMC is like 13 bucks, 13 bucks a share. This community health is only $3.34. The Deutsche Bank, when I bought this, uh, this call option, it was 20 bucks. I only bought one and I bought it before they uh, put out their earnings. Uh, that one was kind of a gamble. I was hoping that their earnings would go up. It didn't. It went down. So this, this call option is about to expire uh, soon. Uh, worthless, pretty much. And that's the thing about call options, call or put options, is that it gives you the right but not the uh, obligation to buy stock. So... If I wanted to, before this expires, if I wanted to buy 100 shares at this uh, strike price of $9, then I can. But um, I, I don't, so. <laughs> All right, so then there's Dean Foods, which uh, is about $23 a share. We got GE General Electric. That one's not doing, that one hasn't been doing the greatest for a while. But some of these uh, I got uh, because I wanted to spread out my portfolio. Um, but some of them are low, and I'm hoping that they will turn around and start making money. Not all of these I plan to keep for the long term. Some I intend to. Uh, get it to a certain point, make money, and then move it to something else, which I've already done that on a few. Uh, this IAU is uh, gold. It's a gold electronic transfer fund. I also got silver, which is down here. And those are, I mean, you can see it's only negative $4.22. Silver is negative 7 So remember that transaction fee that I was telling you about is where that is coming into play. I got Intel. Right now I've only got five shares. Um, it's at $45 right now. Lyft. I, I bought a couple of shares when it first debuted it. Um, I should have waited before getting it. But sometimes, you know, it, it debuts and the stock just goes right up. Um, that was the case with Pinterest right here. So you can see I've got about twenty dollars there uh, I bought a share of Nvidia the other day and let's see there's surgery partners this one's kind of going up and down at the moment but uh, again like I said some of these I'm I'm holding for the long term um, and some I'm holding gonna be holding for several months then we got the S&P 500 the electronic uh, there are the ATF um, and here I buy a call and a put option on the market as a whole, pretty much. So if the market melts up or it melts down, I have a call in place to be able to, uh, catch that. And I buy it very inexpensively, uh, out, um, what do you want to say? Uh, out of money, out of the money. You might, be, you might be thinking, yeah, you are out of money. No. <laughs> now, there's a term of in the money, at the money, and out of the money when it comes to call options. Um, and you can look into that. There's, there's uh, videos and stuff about that. But basically, uh, the S&P is not at, uh, the ETF is not at 320 right now. It's, uh, let me take a look at this. It's at 288. So what I'm basically doing is I as I have a call option that is inexpensive, but it's set it's set up high, uh, like three or six months ahead. And so if the market just shoots up, then that call option that I paid maybe 20 bucks on is going to be making uh, money for me. And then I also have a put option, which means if the market's going down, I'm making money. 
So I have a put option set low. So I'm only paying 20 bucks, 20, 20, 30 dollars, whatever. And if Trump makes a tweet that upsets people, which seems to happen every day, but mainly investors, <laughs> and the market just drops like a rock, then, and it continues to drop, let's say we go into a recession or something, then that put option that I bought is going to make money for me. So that's why I have a call and a put here on the S&P 500. Um, since there is an expiration date on options, you're pretty much gambling if it's going to make money or not for you. So I, I have in the past spent uh, money on quite a few options and I lost quite a bit. So that's why I've been focusing more on stocks rather than options. However, options is a good way to make money. Um, but I like to think of the, uh, the S and P options as hedging, hedging my account. So I'm hedging if the market, you know, the market as a whole goes up high, then I've got something in there that's going to catch it. And with a put, a put option, the same way if it goes down. So I've also got AT and T. This one is one that I'm actually planning on, on holding for the long term because their dividends are, are decent. They're like, uh. 40, I think like uh, 40, 40 cents uh, a share. So if you have 100 shares, then that means every uh, every quarter you're going to get $40 um, extra. Wh whether that whether that is down, whether the stock is down or up, you're going to be getting 40 bucks. So you're you're going to be getting paid. And right now I've only got five shares on them. And, and I was, I'm, I'm just buying like five shares at a time. So, and then also setting money aside. I don't spend all my money that's in my investment account. I try to build that up. So that way, when the market drops, it's kind of like a sale. It's like, oh, things are on sale. What, what can I get? Oh, AT&T has dropped. Perfect. You know, Disney has dropped. Perfect. I'll get, I'll get one or two shares of that. Um, Uber, I just recently got. Uh, that one, I waited a few days after it debuted it since Lyft didn't do so well. And same thing, Uber didn't do well when it first debuted it, it dropped. That's when I jumped in and bought a couple of shares. And right now it's making me about five bucks. Woohoo! I've also got Weight Watchers and U.S. Steel. So... These are all the prices of what, what I'm spending here. So $21, $40, $40, $14. The biggest one that I've got here is NVIDIA. That's about $159. And I've only got one share there. But that is pretty much it. So uh, thanks for watching uh, this episode of Chef Rambles. And I hope this was... Hope you found this uh, useful or in, or uh, informational. Is that a word? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, let me know if you invest. Uh, what uh, what companies do you invest in? Do you do you do options? Do you do shares? Do you do both? Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm interested to hear from you. Other than that, uh, if you're new here, uh, please subscribe. Let me know you're out there. Because uh, I upload videos all the time, and it's not just rambling videos, but I do all kinds of different things. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another rambling video.